Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Michael, and I'm a founder at Tradespark.com, the social network for global trade. Today, I want to give you a brief crash course in B2B marketplaces. But first, I need your help. I need you to imagine that you are a buyer for a retail chain looking to purchase products from Asia. OK, you got that. You're a buyer sourcing from Asia. And the product we're looking for today are kitchen sinks. And our problem is, how do we find a supplier that we can trust that can sell us 500 kitchen sinks? Now, one approach would be to go to a website many of us know about, like an Alibaba.com, and search for kitchen sinks. So let's do that. Wow, I don't know if you can see that, but it reveals 60,000 something plus products in several thousand suppliers. Seems like a good thing, right? Actually, it's not. How can we verify, do due diligence on so many suppliers, right? It's very difficult for us to do that. Our problem is not finding suppliers, it's finding the right supplier. And that's what TradeSpark does. It helps you find the right supplier by using your network. On TradeSpark, when you do a search, you're going to get a list of products just like on the other, oh, other websites. The difference is we filter the search for you, showing the products and suppliers in your network first. Why does that matter? It matters because you can use your relationships to verify a potential trade partner. So let's take a look at a kitchen sink search result on TradeSpark as seen through the eyes of Dan McNulty. He's a buyer of kitchen sinks just like us. As you can see, the first couple of suppliers we're connected to. We already know them. We may have done business with them already. The third supplier, however, is in our wider network. We're not connected to Stephanie, but we are, do have a shared connection in Grant Davis. That's why Stephanie appears high in the search, because we can verify her through Grant. But before we get into verification, we should probably look at Stephanie's product, right? So let's take a look at a product profile on TradeSpark. And when you get up there, you can see it's got all the product information. And it shows that, actually, it's not there yet, but she does do minimum order of 300 products, which is good for us. The next step is we can actually click on Stephanie's profile to learn more about her and her company. And when we do that, we can see that Stephanie actually has a reference from another buyer. And that buyer happens to be Simon Perez. And the key thing about TradeSpark is when there is a reference, we know who wrote the reference. You can check on that person. But for us, to verify Stephanie, it's probably best to use our shared connection. Grant, the person we know. And I happen to know that Grant is an inspection agent. So wouldn't it be great to get a recommendation for a supplier from one of our inspection agents? At the same time, we can also click on and send an inquiry to Stephanie's product. And when you do that, all of the product information is going to be there in the inquiry. So Stephanie's going to know exactly what we're inquiring about. At the same time, we can connect with Stephanie. And what does that mean? If she accepts, that means every time she uploads a new product or goes to a trade show or does something that may help us, it's going to be fed to us in our network update, real time. So I think you can get the idea of how powerful social sourcing can be for you. But you may have a big question in your mind, which is, sounds great, but how do I get this network? How do I get these questions? these connections. So let's take a look at the TradeSpark dashboard. It's unique for every user, right? On the dashboard, much like Facebook or LinkedIn, on the dashboard, you can upload your connections via uh, other web services, Yahoo, Google, Gmail, or even upload a client list you know, from a file like Excel, et cetera. In addition, on TradeSpark, you're going to have people asking to connect or inviting to connect with you on LinkedIn. Also, TradeSpark suggests products and suggests potential connections based on your product profile. And we have tens and tens and tens and tens of thousands of suppliers and more than a half a million products online already. Another way is to look at who else in your network is connecting with who, and you could look at, go ahead and check them out and see who they're connecting with. 
Better yet, you can filter the dashboard. Most buyers, like Dan here, doesn't buy one product like kitchen sinks, they buy multiple products. So if you filter here by, for example, faucets, suddenly the entire dashboard changes. And all you see are your faucet connections, uh, who's uploaded new faucets that you want to check out, who's going to a trade show in faucets, and plus the TradeSpark suggested connections and products turned to faucets. Really neat stuff, and no other B2B marketplace is doing this. Now, up to now, I've been talking mostly about the buyer, but this is good for vendors, too. For example, Dan, obviously, he buys kitchen sinks from Asia, but he also sells them. So he can go ahead and take that product, and maybe he's got his brand on it, and upload it onto TradeSpark, and then share it with his wider network, again, via other you know, web services or via an Excel file, et cetera. And this is really good. We see our suppliers doing this as a follow-up to trade, show, trade shows. So lastly, I want to say TradeSpark is free, um, but we use a premium, a freemium model like LinkedIn for Revenue. And if you are a buyer, supplier, or trade service part, uh, provider, we urge you, come on to TradeSpark and let social work for you in trade. Lastly, if you want to know more about TradeSpark, see us on the fourth floor. Thank you very much.